this together and if you spot me make an error on the spreadsheet then call it out and let's see what's going on. So to begin with, have a look at the scenario. I've got it here on the right, okay? Kenneth, when you're ready as well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate your commitment to settling an argument. That's good. Let's try and do this together, shall we? $500 annually, 4.5% per annum. So because we already set this up this morning, we can go ahead and just change that to 500. Ta-da, numbers. And then we can go ahead and change this to 4.5. <clears throat> you can see that what's happened on my spreadsheet, by the way, is it's just defaulting to percentage points uh, to like no decimal points. So I'm going to make my window here a bit wider. If you've not seen this before, next to your dollar sign and your percent sign, you can see there's some business here around decimal points, right? So you want the one that's uh, this one, that's going to give me an extra decimal point of accuracy, right? You can press it as many times as you like, um, but it'll, sh it'll show you a certain precision, even if all of the numbers are in the background, okay? Of course, if you didn't press the percentage button, then you'd be wanting to go 0.045, classic error to have some decimal place business going on. All right, so then it says, what will be the future value of this account at the start of the 11th year? So my previous model only went to eight years, right? So what I need to do is add another one. There's nine. There's 10. Now, just pause for a minute, because I hear that this has been, um, the, the people sort of asking about what's going on here, right? This is where it's really important. Do you remember last lesson when we were talking about annuities and we said there was more than one way to set it up, even when you're writing out the working, okay? This is why it's so essential to define your terms. And admittedly, it's partly on me. I haven't written down any working, I'm just showing you with the spreadsheet, right? But I did say it right at the top, and you can kind of infer it just by looking at a, a quantity like this, right? Amount here is defined as end of year. Does that make sense? As I've set up this, this, this spreadsheet, right? The reason you can know it is because, well, there's $500 at the beginning, and then at the end of year one, when n equals one, you've got more than that. So that must be the whole year has elapsed, and interest has been calculated. Okay, so far so good? All right, excellent. So this is at the end of the 10th year. If I were to just copy and paste this, what I have here is the end of the 11th year, and that is not what the question is asking. It says at the start of the 11th year. So what we would need to do to do the calculation is say, well, take that amount at the end of that year, and then at the beginning of the next year, a new deposit gets added, right? So that's what we've got here. I'll just zoom out so we can see the whole thing. Nope, not open the app store. It's not very helpful. Let me just get this a little bit higher. All right. So this would be my answer right here to part A. Now it says, how much will the future value increase if you deposit $600 annually instead? So we up the deposit from 500. And this is the beauty of setting up a model like this, right? You don't have to go back to your calculator and start writing more stuff down. All you have to do is change that one number. So if I go 600, like so. Now it's always great to do a sense check, but in some senses here, you're like, the calculations there tell me what's going on, right? You can not just see the final number, which is what happens on a scientific calculator. You see how it was building over time. So you can check your intuition against every single year and what's happening. And by the way, one of the nice things about the way that we set up this equation is, have a look here. I didn't manually say, add $500, I used a reference to say, add whatever that deposit is, right? So it has also changed along with me. Um, all of my formulas are good to go, right? So there's my new answer for $600 annually. Then it says, part C, how much will the future value increase if you regularly deposit the original $500? So let's go back and change that, 500. But you do it with a bank that provides a higher interest rate of 5.2%. Again, the beauty of the model, right? We just go to that one number and we just change, we do a different substitution, hit enter, off you go, okay? So only a few percentage points and it made quite a few hundred dollars of difference, okay? Now, part D, this is where you, and we did this right at the end of period zero, but if you, you know, if you were not following where we were at at the time, maybe this part was lost on you. What will be the present value of this account at the start of the 11th year? The present value of this account. So we have to fiddle with this a little bit, right? So I'm gonna do that trick that I did before. I'm gonna copy this number. I just wanna have it somewhere so I can see it. 
while I go and change the model, because this number's about to disappear once I fiddle with my equations, right? So I'm gonna paste it down here. You can see it says zero dollars, why is that? It's following formulas, but I don't want the formula. I'm gonna click on this menu again, paste values, ta-da, there's my actual number, so that when I do my goal seeking, I'll know what to put in, okay? So this is um, start 11th year. I suppose I should actually label that so that you know it's different from the rest of the column, okay? And then what I say is, all right, all of these formulas are defunct, right? They're, they're not what I actually want, right? I'm gonna delete all of these, no, all of them. Let's try that again, there we go. And we're going back to this uh, original 4.5% original deposit. And now what I wanna do is reform all of my formulas so that when I take this amount here and multiply by my interest calculation, then I don't put in any more deposits, right? All my previous formulas, I was adding that extra 500 every year. So now all I do is take that amount, multiply by one plus my interest rate. And if you're watching closer, you might remember, I need to change that red reference so it stays put when I copy and paste my formulas down, right? So I'll go ahead and put that dollar sign right there. Does that look like the right amount? Four and a half percent? Yeah, you can see it's like sort of added a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go all the way and paste it down, okay? Now, start of the 11th year, right there, actually, if you think back to how this model works, there is no additional, um, what's it called? There's no additional deposit, right? So at the start of the 11th year, that's exactly where you're at because the interest calculation won't happen till the end. <clears throat> All right, excuse me. Now, what we wanted was for this final value here to actually be equal to 7,178, that's what we want, right? So therefore I'm gonna go back to my data, what if analysis, there's my goal seek. Okay, help me out. What cell do I want? Have I got the right cell? That's right, that's, that's the future value right there. I wanna set it to the value that I saved down the bottom here, $7,178.06. Which thing am I going to adjust? What cell do I want Excel to change? Hmm. It's this initial deposit, right? This is the thing that goes in once and then we don't touch it, okay? So if I click right there and press OK, it's actually very satisfying watching it fiddle around every time, okay? It found the target value, $7,178.06. So what that means is if I put in $4,622 and then just let it go, by sheer interest it's gonna to grow to that amount that we hoped for, right? So what that means is those future 7,000-ish dollars, it's like, it's equivalent to $4,600 today, okay? So this is something that's really important for you guys to think about. I don't know how many of you have thought about opportunity cost. Economic students are like sort of sick to death of this. Opportunity cost is what you absorb when you decide to do one thing, means you're not doing other things. So when you're putting those $100 in, right, this is kind of your opportunity cost, right? Today, this is what I'm sacrificing. All right, so uh, there's, there's part D, present value of this account at the start of the 11th year. When you go to part E and part F, you can see we actually are returning back to the original model as it works, I'm not thinking about present value anymore. So. Bear with me as I undo, 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 undo. There we go. I think that's, that's where we're at, right? So I've gone back to my original model. When will the investment first surpass a value of $10,000? What am I gonna have to do here? I'll give you a clue. Probably gonna need to zoom out a bit. How am I gonna change this spreadsheet? Ian, what were you thinking? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna drag it down. Those formulas that I've got, which take us to the 10th year so far. I just need to keep on going until, what do I wanna to get to? $10,000, okay? Now, just watch, right? As I do this, I'm gonna paste down some amount like that. So clearly I've gone way past the $10,000, okay? But look at the question. It says, when will the investment first surpass a value of $10,000? The thing that this doesn't show you is when the deposit gets made. This is the deposit and the interest. Does this make sense? They're kind of balled into one. So you have to look closely and see, given that the deposit's $500 every year, at this point here, that's the end of the 12th year, 
So when we tick over to January 1, what happens? I could put another column here to show if you like. What happens is all of this plus 500. Let me uh, just paste it down. Okay, do, do you see what I've added here in this column, right? So this is at the beginning of the year, the start of the year. I take the amount where the interest is added, then I, I add my 500, right? So looking down to about here, you can see I'm getting close, but you add the 500. I mean, you didn't need Excel to see it, right? It's not quite enough to get to the 10 grand. You need that interest, oops, sorry, I changed my, um, my sheet. You need that interest to be calculated. So it's right there. So how would you describe that? Like you've got to use some words in your, in your answer. How would you describe that period of time? End of the 14th year, right? Perfect, okay? Not the start of the 13th, sorry, not the start of the 14th, the end of the 14th. And you wouldn't need the uh, start of the 15th either because you've already got there by the interest calculation. Okay, and then final question, how much would you need to deposit each year if you want to have 8,000 uh, saved at the start of the 11th year? So here it is. There's the start of the 11th year. So we're gonna be doing some goal seeking here. I think you get the rough idea, all right?